Hi everyone. I'm sorry for the delay. I was actually live um, earlier on and I went live at um, 8 o'clock exactly, but it was only me that I could actually see it. It was the most hilarious thing because I was, I was talking and I was talking and I was seeing that nobody was joining. Um, so um, it was it was really a relief when I figured out that um, actually I was only talking to myself and that's why people uh, weren't joining in. But I see that Pete, uh, Peter has Pete has joined, uh, so it makes me feel so much better that I have somebody to talk to. Um, right, so I'm going to talk today about uh, crying. So, you know, crying has been uh, defined by a doctor as the emotional response uh, to uh, physical or emotional pain. So, um, so the um, emotional pain, uh, you know, we can feel it um, obviously in regards to something that has happened to us. Um, and but we feel it not only because of sadness. So we don't cry only because of sadness, which I'm sure that from from personal experience uh, you have realized that. So um, we cry when we're mad, like if we're really mad. We even cry cry with laughter, and we even cry when we're terrified. So there is a range of reasons for us to actually uh, cry or um, for us to express this emotion. So uh, babies, when they cry, they actually cry not only as a um, means of um, um, expressing distress, but also as a means of uh, express as a means of communicating with us. So you know, I, I don't have children, and so I'm not gonna talk too much about that. But I'm gonna talk about my own experiences and my own emotions, and remembering um, how it was to be a child a long time ago and and cry. So. Um, Right, so crying. The, the whole point of uh, today's uh, webinar is, is to talk about that and what happens when we suppress crying. So I remember one time when I was young and um, the, the people around me, you know, when you're young and when you're a child, you look at the people around you and they're like mother, father, God. I'm the youngest of five children, so besides my mother and my father, there were many other siblings that were much um, older, uh, much bigger physically, so obviously you would look at them differently just because you are small and they are big, and in my mind also more powerful. So when you're surrounded by grown-ups, you know, they, you think that they have it all figured out, and this is how it's done, and you take their words and their actions you know like like gospel because again you think that they've been around on this earth for such a long time so they they know what they're doing and you you'd expect that from them so it's not that you'd expect it from them but it's like that is how you would look at it because everything is so big everything is so wow um so when i was younger um you know th there were many times when i would cry and i'm sure you can remember or if you have children you can empathize that um <clears throat> children will cry for um not not a lot of reasons you know they, something small happens for them it's like the world and they will start crying so i did that as well and i remember one time when i was crying i had a fight with a with a colleague or with a friend and i came in the house and i i was crying on the way so my sister said to me stop crying or i'll give you something to cry about you know don't get me wrong I love my sister tremendously, but she, and she, she did her best in making sure that I was happy or doing her best, whatever she knew, whatever she could in, in order to, to secure my happiness the way that she knew. But 
by saying that or by doing that, you know, I, I shut my mouth and I started quietly to cry within myself or, or my intention was not to cry. So what that actually does is that it suppresses the emotion. So again, as I said at the beginning of the video, depending on the reason for the crying, i.e. what emotion is behind the crying, then you'll go into the respective bucket. So we have four main emotions uh, or yeah, we, we say, or I say buckets, only because it's easier for our conscious mind to actually understand something that is not palpable. You can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't touch it. It's just, it's just there. That's kind of sometimes how they are with, with emotion. So it's just an easier way for us to understand. So we have mud, which ranges from a, smiled, uh, a, a mild annoyance to... Um, being really, um, you know, road rage or really mad and glad, which ranges from uh, being uh, mildly uh, glad to being in bliss, um, uh, sad, which uh, ranges from just being upset because it's raining outside, uh, being sad because it's raining outside, to being really in grief um, and scared, uh, again, ranges from uh, mild, mildly scared because you saw a spider to being really terrified. And you can actually cry because of all of this um, emotion. So you can cry when, when you're mad, you can cry when um, with laughter, uh, you can cry obviously when you're sad and also when you're terrified. So depending on um, the emotions behind it, when you're suppressing crying, uh, it goes into the respective bucket and you'll continue going into the respective bucket until you deal with it. You know, you'll continue suppressing the emotion until you feel it, until you deal with it. So um, what happens, for example, is that you will continually not feel the crying, will not feel the emotion behind the crying or suppressing your crying. So uh, you'll go into the, the sad bucket and when you grow up and you know as a woman you might watch a, a chick flick, uh, a comedy uh, or even as a man, you know, it, uh, we're all, <laughs> um, we, we all like it, it's not, it's not only women. Uh, so we might start crying at the end when the girl finally gets the guy. So because our subconscious recognizes this as an opportunity to unload some of that crying that we haven't done when the time was right. Um, research also indicates that in our tears there is a natural painkiller. So when we stop ourselves from crying, we stop our natural um a reaction to um to give ourselves painkillers and make ourselves better that's why after you cry you actually feel so much better by the way if you have any uh questions please feel free to ask me and once i'm done with my talking then i will uh pick up any questions um right um there's also uh, there's also uh, ways in which uh, we are expressed or we are expected to uh, express uh, dissatisfaction or to uh, express uh, crying. So there are, so for example, you know, at a funeral, there are very sad emotions uh, or there are very sad events because of course we're saying goodbye to someone, but there are um, it is expected of us to actually show that uh, emotion and if uh, another emotion comes up such as uh, being glad then that will not be seen as appropriate. So um, I'm going to talk about a personal um, story in regards to this. So my father passed away about two or three years ago and there is a famous uh, family joke that my dad said once, um, you, Olympia, which is my mom, when you gave birth to Michael, 
uh, Michael is, is my nephew. My mom did not give birth to my nephew. He was my sister who gave birth to my nephew, uh, obviously. So my dad, just not thinkingly, he said, you, Olympia, when you gave birth to, to Michael. And my mom said, what are you talking there, man? I didn't give birth to Michael. What are you saying? So at his funeral, you know, the priest was saying a few words because the priest knew my father quite well. My father was going to that church quite a few times. He was saying some words about my dad. And, and he said, and he gave he helped raise or he raised five beautiful children and my nephew says six and my brother-in-law was next to my nephew and he started laughing of course because it's funny you know at the funeral i think it's important to also celebrate the life of the person that was not only the fact that he is no longer here so my my brother-in-law started laughing so <laughs> and my sister being next to my brother-in-law, he started elbowing him and saying, what are you doing? Stop, stop laughing. This is serious stuff. And yes, it is. We were saying goodbye to my dad, but it's also important to celebrate the happy memories that one brings you and not, not only do what is expected of you, which is cry. Right. So um, I'm going to also talk a bit about uh, the flip side so that's when we do too much crying um, so that can happen as well and that is what I call when we wallow into our emotions so you know like when you cry by all means give it your all just just go for it feel the emotions whatever they may be you know it, it might be mad and you it might not be something that it's reasonable you might be mad and and your conscious mind might tell you but you shouldn't feel that way well actually there is no wrong there is no right there just is so it doesn't matter what the reason for the emotion is just give it your all and feel it and if you feel that you need to cry then by all means do that so um, again about the wallowing once you're done with the crime just just let it go let it rest and leave it there. You don't need to go back into it and revisit it because that's adding more pain to yourself and you're just going, going in circle over the same event and you're thinking about it again and again and again and it's like looping and then before you know it you're going to start crying again about it because you've started thinking about it again and by thinking about it you're giving it energy so then it starts to uh, come back into your lights again so again just just start um, so start crying if you feel that you need to cry that's what i'm here talking about it <laughs> by all means go for it but once it's done just let it go and be done. Right. I made some notes, so that's why I'm looking down. So another um, reason why people might not want to, to see others cry or um, might not want to cry themselves is because it obviously feels vulnerable. And especially if you have other people around you, they might think to themselves, oh, my God, what did I do? wrong when it actually has nothing to do with them or what can i do to fix this person and especially um i can empathize how um, well i can't really empathize because i'm not a mother but i can understand why a mother would um feel that way about her child and would maybe do everything that she can in order to stop him from crying um, so this is applicable for when we're older as well it is something that um, makes others feel vulnerable and by crying you're showing your vulnerability and by not crying others would think oh it's been years since I've cried. I don't cry. What is that? And you think that you're strong and you think that you are, you know, um, well, strong. But it's actually not 
a weakness to cry it's actually a strength because you're actually um you're actually um you're opening yourself up and you're expressing that emotion especially if somebody else is around you like in a couple um or maybe even your children. You know, if your children see you cry, you're showing them what it is to be a human. Everybody cries, there's nothing wrong with that. It's actually good. It is a strength to be able to show your emotions to others, to show your human side to others. Now, thank you for that. So I do have questions here. What happens if you're in a public? How do you experience emotion in front of other people? Oh, thank you for that. So yeah, I guess I've briefly touched upon that. Yeah, so in a public, you know, sometimes I see women down the street crying and I, it happens. I think it's important to feel your emotions regardless of where you are. Obviously, if, if you're in the public and you don't want people to see you, that is perfectly reasonable. You might want to find somewhere where you can go, but I am totally up for feeling the emotion and not suppressing it because that will cause you, um, you know, um, that will cause you to not feel that emotion because that's what happens when you suppress it. You just push it down and then you put it on ice and you don't feel that emotion. And you might say that, yeah, it's handy not feeling crying. Who who needs that? I mean, it's, it's pain. Who needs it? But you'll end up suppressing all the other emotions that are good in your life, like joy, laughter, spontaneity, um, glad, and even mad, um, you know, when something terrible is happening, like um, somebody is trying to steal your car, it is perfectly reasonable to go mad and try to rip their head off because they're doing something that is potentially harming you. So all the emotions that we have, they're all helpful, especially the glad emotion, because we all want to be glad and enjoy all the time. So, yeah, I think I'm always up for uh, feeling the emotion, regardless of uh, when, when it's happening. But uh, it's also perfectly understandable not to want to do it on the street, but uh, just, just take care of your own authentic need. I can't give an example at the moment now, because it's very much personal to everyone, but that's just the only message that I would like to transmit today. All right, so I don't see any other messages, just just hellos and, and highs, and I say hello to you all, and thank you for joining in. And on Wednesday, the 20th of June, which is only in a few days' time, I'm having um, Breath for Life um, uh, sessions. Uh, this is because I'm training to be a, a breathwork practitioner, which uh, basically means that I'm training to help um, to help you go into your subconscious mind and clear all of those uh, stuck emotions and clear all the clutter that you no longer need in order to have a healthier, happier life. So all the sadness, all the crying that you didn't do at the right time for whatever reason that may be, um, I'm training to help you deal with that. If you so wish and you think that you've had enough and you wish to move on with your life. So if you do wish to move on with your life, at the moment, uh, the sessions are half the price because I am training. Uh, they are supervised by the founder of uh, Breath for Life uh, Breathwork, which is uh, Penny uh, Quell Pierce, and she is um, heavily trained with 22 years experience in the field. So um, I would highly encourage you to take advantage of this opportunity if you so wish. So I look forward to hearing from you. You can see my link um, just somewhere there in the title of the, of the talk. And thank you all for coming. And I'm sorry for the delay again in coming online. Uh, thank you. Bye you all.